Good morning and good afternoon. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Joanne Ferrara and I'm the Marketing Director at Dimezzo and I will be your host for today's webinar on the efficiency of the frequencer and the best presented by Dr. Peter Borka of the National Karani Institute of Pulmonology in Budapest, Hungary. Today's webinar will be moderated by Dr. Laura McIntosh, an independent advisor to Dimezzo and the co-chair of Dimezzo's Scientific Advisory Board. At the end of the presentation today, we will have a brief Q&A that will be moderated by Dr. McIntosh. Please submit your, submit your questions at any time during the webinar, and we will be sure to answer them using the Q&A feature in live. We reserved enough time at the end of the webinar to address them. And now I will turn the webinar over to Dr. McIntosh. Thank you, Joanne, and welcome everyone. It is my pleasure to moderate today's webinar. I would like to say a few words on Dimezzo, and then I will turn it over to today's speaker. Briefly, Dimezzo is a Montreal-based medical device innovator of the airway clearance device industry, and it uses proprietary acoustics to treat pulmonary disorders and respiratory conditions. Dimezzo's product, the Frequencer, is a digitally controlled acoustic device that promotes bronchial drainage by inducing vibrations at specific frequencies through the chest wall of the patient. Now these frequencies, optimized at 40 hertz, match the resonance of the lung, which is very important, and change the property of mucus, making it more liquid and easier to expectorate. The device has been used for more than a decade to help treat patients across a variety of different lung disorders impacted by mucus, and it has been shown to have specific advantages over other airway clearance devices, particularly in critical care patient settings, such as the adult pediatric and neonatal intensive care units. But now it is my pleasure to introduce Dr. Peter Borka, who will highlight one use of the frequencer, that of treating cystic fibrosis. Dr. Borka practices at the National Koryani Institute of Pulmonology in the Cystic Fibrosis Department in Budapest, Hungary. He is a renowned clinician and teacher holding a doctorate in physiotherapy and has specialized in the treatment of cystic fibrosis for the majority of his career. Today, he will present an independent investigator-led study on the use of the frequencer versus the vest for treatment of cystic fibrosis. So it is my pleasure to welcome Dr. Borka and turn the presentation over to him. Thank you, Laura, and thank you, Joanna, for this invitation. Uh, <clears throat> thank you for the possibility to be here to present our study, what we did uh, with Frequencer in the West. It's a great honor to speak to you, and I need to apologize because of my English. Next slide, please. Yeah, on the first uh, slide, I would like to introduce the place where this study was. Um, top right, left, sorry, left, you see our one of our single bedroom with a bathroom. On the right, you see the corridor of the inpatient part of the department. We have a gym on the right, left the button, and uh, where the patients can do their physical activities. That is a very important part of the treatment of the CF patients. Uh, moreover, we have a, a street workout um, just near the, the, the building of the department. So I think that's all what you need to know in the surroundings. Next slide, please. Okay. Um, I would like to start to, to introduce a little bit the cystic fibrosis treatment. Uh, it's very important because that's the reason why we choose this, uh, these devices. Uh, one of the most important or one of the most two important uh, uh, therapy is the airway clearance. We can say this is the cornerstone stone in cystic fibrosis. Uh, all the morbidity and all the mortality connected to the, to the respiratory problem, the destroying of the airways and this uh, destroying of the airways and the alveol is connected to the inflammation and the mucus accumulation in, in these airways. So that's why it's very, very important to find the best strategies for clearing those airways. Uh, 
until today, we don't have a, a superior technique or a superior device, a, a gold standard, we can say. Uh, and that's why it's very, very important to, to compare these, um, these devices, these techniques, um, to compare in this stage or that, that stage in this disease or that disease, this diagnosis, that diagnosis, in this age or that age. And in this way, we have more and more um, information about the treatment, the, the best treatment for these patients. As I mentioned, we have um, uh, different techniques and we have dif different devices. And I summarize one of the most important techniques and devices. First group is the techniques. And I must start with the chest physical therapy that contains the positional therapy or postural drainage and other manual techniques like the manual compression or the vibration shaking and something like this. <clears throat> Uh, we can say this is uh, somehow a conventional chest physiotherapy. And, um, <clears throat> and we can connect to this passive group of the treatment of the techniques, the forced expiratory technique or the half technique and other techniques like the, the ACBT active cycle of breathing technique that comes from the Great Britain or the autogenic drainage that comes from <clears throat> Belgium. And we must uh, say that the physical activity, it's a very, very important uh, technique what we must use treating our patients uh, because in one part, it's a very good effect on the cardiorespiratory system. It's very important in cystic fibrosis. Moreover, it's a very effective airway clearance strategy. And the devices, the first group of the devices is the devices that use the positive expiratory pressure. The positive expiratory pressure uh, with what we can prevent against the, the airway collapse that mainly occur in case of um, forced expiration. In, uh, in this big group of the positive expiratory pressure devices, we have a subgroup, the oscillating positive expiratory pressure that induce somehow a vibration or oscillation. And with this oscillation, it acts on the airways, acts on the, the, the mucus and try to loosen the mucus. Um, um, and another oscillatory device is the, the Simeox from France. It's a brand new device a, a few years ago, it appears on the market only. And uh, the topic from today, the frequencer, and, uh, and the high frequency chest wall oscillation, the VEST device. Uh, <clears throat> if we use any oscillation, or if we use a device that, that works with the oscillation or the vibration, we can um, divide into two groups these devices. The first group is the direct device, and the second group is the indirect device. If, if when a device um, act directly on the airways with this oscillation or with this um, vibration. This is the direct. It could be the Simaux or the flutter, what I didn't mention earlier, uh, from Switzerland. <clears throat> and, and the device that act through the chest wall and act on effect on the, on the airways and pass through the chest wall with this oscillation, those are the indirect uh, devices like the frequencer and the West. Next slide, Laura, uh, Joanna, please. Sorry. <clears throat> so uh, we were curious about the effectiveness of the of the frequencer and 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 the West. These two uh, oscillatory devices. Um, the West manipulates um, uh, with the mechanical frequency, a mechanical vibration, vibrate directly, no, sorry, indirectly the, the airways, and the frequencer that uses this electroacoustical transducer. Uh, <clears throat> we checked or controlled some objective and some subjective parameters. The objective group was we measure the acute changes of the lung function. So we measure before and after the treatment, the lung function parameter with the, with the spirometer. 
and we measured uh, the, the changing of the oxygen saturation with a pulse oximeter. And at the end of the treatment, we checked the, the amount of the evacuated sputum. Moreover, we had a, a questionnaire with the four very, very simple questions. And we asked these questions uh, uh, from the patients and also the PTs. They have the same, the same question, same uh, very simple questions. The first question was how comfortable it was, the west or the frequency, how tiring it was, the two devices, how effective you consider it to be, and uh, fourth, the last question, how easy it was to use. Next slide, please. Yeah, <clears throat> here you see our participants, 25 adult patients from our department. We have 18 female and only seven male. I was thinking about why is this unproportional ratio? Uh, maybe because the, the, the female patients uh, accept more the inpatient treatments and, and, and not the boys, I'm not sure in this. Uh, here you can see the, the mean age, it was uh, eight, uh, 28 years old. And our BMI value was uh, uh, 20.6 kilogram per meter on a quarter. Uh, at the first glance, it surprised me very much because in our country, it's not a common thing that our CF patients are in, in, in the normal range of the BMI value. It's uh, start from 20 to 25 or 24.9, the normal range. And, and we know that our CF patients are very, very thin. So they were in, in our group, they were a little bit higher or more than the lower the low limit of the normal range and then we can see the the force uh, the lung function parameters the force vital capacity was 66 percent all ratio is or all data is uh, the the ratio of the predicted value uh, the fev1 probably the most important lung function parameter was a little bit more than 40% of the normal. The FEV1 per FVC, that's a very important parameter connecting to the obstruction. It was uh, 64%. The highest flow in, during the forced expiratory technique, well, for, so forced ex expiration was almost 50%. And another important parameter, lung function parameter, is the forced expiratory flow between 25 to 75 of the forced vital capacity. It was 15 percent. I think it's more or less a an, an, an normal um, uh, data uh, from CF patients in, in our countries. And um, I must say that all the patients we no, we have patients from all the three groups from the, the mild group, from the moderate group, and the severe, more severe group, but all of them were in a stable condition. Next slide, Joanna. In the next two slides, we see the inclusion ex and exclusion criteria. So <clears throat> inclusion criteria, the CF patients who were admitted to our hospitals uh, for uh, in, in most cases, they had an IV treatment at the same time. They must be over 18 years. <clears throat> they must be in a, in a, in a stable situation or, or condition. And we try to involve patients who evacuated more than um, in 10 grams sputum per day. Next slide, Joanna. Yeah, and here you can see the exclusion criteria. Of course, we didn't treat the patients who were in a very severe exacerbation, who had a very severe exacerbation together with a fever. Um, another very important exclusion uh, uh, criteria is the hemoptysis. Um, it's almost a, a base rule that if the patient has hemoptysis, 
or of course in pneumothorax, um, we cannot use any vibration or any oscillation that may deteriorate these, con these conditions. The, <clears throat> the next is the acute bronchospasm, but we use the, used the bronchodilators. I will speak about it later. And of course, if we don't have the informed consent, but I, if I remember well, all the patients <clears throat> uh, signature this informed consent. Next slide, Joanna. Yeah, let's see the method. We did this study in this year, at the beginning of this year, we start with three physiotherapists <clears throat> because these patients were in an inpatient period. That's why this examination was almost normal and every day, or not almost, it was normal and day by day regimen. So the head physician, the pulmonologist uh, controlled these patients uh, day by day. So it was an absolutely safe study in our, in our part from this part. <clears throat> we used both devices three and three times, day by day. And <clears throat> we, <clears throat> we change um, device to device uh, on every alternate days. It's mean if the patient, if a patient start with, uh, <clears throat> for example, the frequency on the first um, day, on Monday, for example, on the next day, on Tuesday, um, he or she must use the, the other the device, the vest, and then we jump back to the, the first device. So in, in this way, uh, <clears throat> it lasts minimum six days or, or more, the, the examination with a one, one patient. We had a randomization uh, depending on date of birth of these patients they start with the frequencer or they start with the, the, the West. Um, it, it's very, very important, um, uh, the starting device, because um, these patients um, were aggressively treat, treated <clears throat> uh, with an IV antibiotic treatment. And moreover, they were treated very aggressively with physiotherapy a minimum two or three times a day, and one, uh, one therapy must be together with the physiotherapist. That's why uh, <clears throat> we could expect less and less evacuated sputum day by day, um, going forward with the treatments, with this treatments and the other treatments. So that's why it was important to choose the first device depending on the date of birth. So it was, that was the, the reason of the randomization. Yes, if we start all, in all cases, if we start with, for example, the frequency, uh, probably uh, the first day will be the most effective days, depending um, um, in, the, in the evacuate sputum point of view. Yeah. We position um, uh, these treatments with the uh, frequency or the or the vest just after their after their uh, regular morning treatment. All of all of our patients use in a morning inhalation treatment some mucolytics. It could be hypotonic saline or fluids or something like this. But now we asked them to use bronchodilators. So it was mandatory to use bronchodilators. Uh, most of our patients use it independently of the, the study, but because we know that uh, uh, if we use any vibration or oscillation <clears throat> when we treat our patients and we try to loosen the mucus with these um, effects, it easily leads to <clears throat> bronchospasm. And that's why we try to prevent this bronchospasm with the usage of the bronchodilator. <clears throat> Before the treatments with the frequency of the vest, <clears throat> we uh, check the, the resting uh, saturation on a fingertip. And also we did a lung function test where we measure the parameters, what I've mentioned earlier. Next slide, please, Joanna. <clears throat> yes, these treatments, these interventions uh, last 18 minutes with the frequency and with the vest. 
Um, with the frequencer, we used six different places on, on the chest cavities, uh, two places on the front side and four places on the back side, two because on the front because the breast and um, because it, it was uh, somehow uh, difficult to, to, to fit very precisely the, the head of the frequencer on the chest cavity to have the good noise that comes out from the frequencer. So only in a, in a very precise fitting the circle on the chest cavity. And we know that the, the CF patients uh, has some problem with the maturation and their whole body size are smaller and the, the whole chest cavity, the chest cavity size are smaller. That's, that's why they have a more curvature shape in the chest cavity. So that's why it was sometimes it was difficult. It was much more easier to find the best place on the back side. For that's why we choose four places on the back and and only two on the on the front sides. And we use this uh, forty hertz according to the recommendation for the for the frequency. And <clears throat> most of our patients uh, accept uh, immediately this hundred percent intensity. Um, one or two patients asked to start with a little bit lower, but it wasn't lower than 80 or 90% of the intensity. And after a few minutes, we can elevate up to 100% again, or 100%. Because we use this <coughs> three, um, sorry, six times three minutes with a frequencer, that's why we use the, this same, this same, the same uh, 18 minutes uh, with the West. We choose again, according to the, the recommendation, um, this uh, 11 to 13 Hertz. Um, uh, according to my knowledge, the, um, the, the proper Hertz of the mechanical frequency must uh, similar as we have in the cilia motion in our airways, uh, the, the, this reply pattern and motion uh, is just this 11 to 13 uh, hertz. Yeah, and intensity is strongly connected to the, to the patient comfortability. So we start with the, uh, a lower intensity, but not lower than five. And we elevate it depending on the patient's comfortability. comfortability. <clears throat> and we can go up to eight uh, if we can elevate it. Uh, as I mentioned, we, we measure the, the saturation before the treatment and just at the mid-time, at the ninth minute, and just before we finish the treatment, so at the very end point of the treatment, so we have three uh, saturation measuring, before, at ninth, and at the end <clears throat> of the treatment. After the treatments with the West or with the frequencer, we repeat the lung function test. And uh, after the lung function test, we measured the evacuated sputum with a scale that was accurate to 0 0.1 grams, so quite uh, accurate. Um, uh, scale we had. <clears throat> we positioned this, um, this measuring, the sputum weight, and it was a wet sputum weight. This measure was after the lung function test because these two devices, the frequencer and the West, are for, the lo for loosening the sputum and not for transporting, this, transporting the, mucus, the mucus. So that's why it's, it's a typical situation that after a, an expectoration treatment, any kind of expectoration treatment, when the patients do a lung function test, and of course they need to do a very forced expiration, during or after this lung function test, it's, it's, it's common that they, they evacuate more sputum. And we can um, measure after this the, the sputum weight. And then 
uh, both the, the patients and the physiotherapist uh, independently of each other, so separately, uh, fill the, the questionnaire, so answer the, the question. We use the, the very common uh, zero to 10 Bohr scale. So it was absolutely comf comfort and or it was absolutely uncomfortable. And we use this statistic IBM SPSS for the, for the results. Next slide, please, Joanna. Now we see on the next slides, we see uh, the results. Before I start um, some sentences with the results, I must start with the colors. So this almost yellow shows all slides shows the, the frequency and this almost blue shows the, 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 the results of the test. And in, in this first slide, we show the lung function test results and we can say that we, we didn't find any significant difference in the change, in the, in the acute change of the, of the lung function uh, with the vest or with the, with the frequency. Uh, in the center, you can see a, a, a narrow yellow stripe. That's the median value. So we have the same amount of uh, results above and the same amounts of result below the, below the, the narrow yellow stripe. Next slide, Laura, uh, Joanna, please. On the next slide, we see the changing of the saturation or the, yeah, and, the, and, the, and the amount of the sputum after the frequency and the vest. And we can see a significant difference. So the frequency was significantly better in a change of the saturation. So it's almost increased, improved the saturation Why the vest a little bit decreased, deteriorated the saturation. So <clears throat> it was the only one, but it was a significant difference in our objective uh, results, the saturation. But we didn't find any significant, significant difference in uh, the amount of the sputum. So after the, the frequency and after the vest, they, they cleared almost the same uh, amount of the sputum. Next slide, Jorna. Yeah, and now we jump to the to the questionnaire. The first uh, slide we can see the 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 question connecting to the comfortable and the question connecting to the to the fatigue. <clears throat> and um, now we can see that if we see the comf the, the first the comfortable, um, we can see that both patients and uh, and the physiotherapist found to be significantly uh, more comfortable the, the frequencer than the, than, than, the, than the rest. And it was the same, if we see the fatigue, it was the same with the patients uh, when we asked, the, uh, asked about the fatigue, but the PTs, the, the, the physiotherapists didn't found significant difference between the two devices. And I would like to jump back to this question later at the discussion part, why should it be? Next slide, Joanna, please. Next slide, the, 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 the third and the, and the fourth question, efficacy and the easy of, of use. And we can see that, that in both questions, efficacy and if easy of use, and both the patients and the physiotherapists found significantly better the, the frequency, the frequencer than, than, than the rest. Uh, yeah, thank you. Next slide, please, Chana. And now we start with the discussion. And after this study, we, we, we may have some uh, important and um, stable uh, sentence. So we can say in our population, in adult CF patients, um, the, the frequency was at least as effective as the rest. If we see the changing of the lung function, or if we see the, the expectoration mobilizing the, the sputum. But 
Secondly, we must say that the frequency was significantly better. If we see the, the changing, the acute changing of the oxygen saturation. And the third uh, sentence is the frequency. Um, both the patients and the physiotherapists found the frequency was much more favorable, much more better um, than the West. Next slide, John. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, this next slide with the discussion, um, I must. I, I started this 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 uh, lecture. Um, the most important therapy that the, the airway clearance, and now I have another most important, another most important point, and this most important point in the CF. Uh, disease in CF treatment is the patient satisfaction. Um, we, we are not able to imagine how difficult it is to do this treatment day by day, year by year, decade by decade, uh, from morning to evening, or sometimes from morning to afternoon and to evening. So that's why the, the, the patient satisfaction is a very, very important point of the treatment. If we find, um, if we find a, a device or if we find a technique what the, that the patients like, they will do it. I will do what I like. If I have a, a therapy that the patient like, they will do it. And in the motivation, that is a crucial point of the CF patients, in the motivation, this is the superior. So that's why I think um, in our study, the questionnaire, the answer of the question, uh, was very important. Secondly, uh, uh, the when we asked the physiotherapist whether it was easy or not, their answer was was differ from the patient's answer. Um, yeah, we didn't clarify when we asked this question. We did clarify. When we asked, for example, how comfortable it was or how difficult it was, um, and when we asked it from the PTs, from the physiotherapists, we did clarify uh, this question is from the patient's point of view or from the physio physiotherapist's point of view. So probably the answer was uh, other than the, the patient's answer because we need to hold on the frequency around the patient. For 18 minutes, we sit by the patients, nearby the patients, and we hold on the head of the, the, head, the frequency around, on the, on the back side and also on the, on, on the front side. Sometimes it's difficult to find the proper position of the frequency. That's why we hold on it. So I think, summarizing this sentence, these sentences, I think um, the, we, the, the physiotherapists, didn't find uh, significantly better the frequency because it wasn't so comfortable or it was a little bit difficult to, to, to hold on it. And, uh, and the last uh, sentence from the discussion, yeah, we have some critical condition like pneumothorax or hemoptysis. Um, when uh, I'm sure the first choice, the, the first uh, device, must be the frequency and not the past, uh, because the frequency is a must uh, uh, is a more uh, a soft device, not so aggressive device as the as the best is. So I think we have some critical conditions when when we prefer the frequency. I think I finished. Yes, it is. Thank you. Thank you very much, Peter. That was a great presentation. And uh, I, I learned a lot actually after hearing it the second time. So I learned even more than the first. <laughs> Clearly the frequencer is well positioned to assist in airway clearance for cystic fibrosis and uh, came, across, uh, came across loud and clear. I look forward to hearing your thoughts on some of the questions that we've received during your presentation. Um, Please note to the participants that you can submit your questions using the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen. So feel free to continue to do so while we, while we answer some of the questions.
So maybe we'll start with a more general question and then um, we've received some specific questions about your study. Um, the first question is, um, and, and you really alluded to it on your last slide, so it flows from that. If I was wondering if you could comment on other diseases, specific diseases, where you think the frequencer would be uniquely positioned. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I connect to, to these words, other diseases. And when, when you say other, I, I don't focus on, on the respiratory problem. So any diseases where we can count on uh, uh, mucus accumulation when we have the problem of the of the clearance of the airways um, we we strongly recommend this device and we have very different conditions that lead to this mucus accumulation uh, we may uh, or no sorry we must use these devices or we must use the frequencer in uh, some neurological condition. You can imagine that if, if the patient has uh, any neurological problem that comes together with the hypotonic respiratory muscle, it's, it's absolutely sure that these patients will have problems with the mucus because they don't have an effective cough and they don't have an effective uh, expiration. Uh, they don't have... Uh, uh, high enough uh, shear force that comes from, or from the ex expiration. So uh, we have a lot of problem with the neurological patients. Or another big group, the, we have some rheumatologic problems uh, that involve also the respiratory system, RA, rheum rheumatic arthritis, or the SPA spondylitis ankylopoietica that's effect on the, the very small joints surrounding the, the, the respiratory system and decrease the motions and decrease the effectivity of the cough. So we may have problems with the clearance and that's why uh, we recommend strongly to use this device. Moreover, uh, in any big chest, chest cavity surgery, we must have, we will have uh, a problem with the, with the mucus. And uh, as I mentioned in the, in, in the lecture, uh, this frequency is a, is a very soft uh, effect. So after the surgery, uh, we must look for devices and, and, and techniques that doesn't so aggressive. So if we see the techniques is uh, the autogenic drainage, it's a very soft technique. If we see the devices, the, the frequency is a very soft device with what we can start with just after the surgery. And of course, uh, we, can, we can focus on the respiratory problems. So we have um, other diseases in the, in the big respiratory group where we have a lot of problem with the clearance, uh, uh, like in bronchiectasis, that is a very similar condition in symptoms to cystic fibrosis or, or the COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases, they have very similar symptoms together with the bronchiectasis in, in COPD also. So in these conditions, I'm, I'm sure we can use these frequencies very, very effectively. Thanks. And maybe I was wondering if you could comment or say a few words on how you, you thought the frequency could be used for the treatment of COVID. Yeah, uh, COVID, yeah. Uh, uh, I would like to separate into two parts the, my answer. The first is to treat the COVID patients, patients in the intensive care unit and the rehabilitation. And, uh, and before I start this answer, uh, one, about one half of the COVID patients had problems with the, with the, with the sputum. They have a uh, 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 productive cough uh, during their, their diseases and after the, uh, the disease or the rehabilitation phase. So in this group of the COVID patients who had productive cough, we must, we can use, and we must use uh, this device in the intensive care unit. And it's, it's a very important point again, and it's again, 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 uh, 
uh, it's a soft device. And in the intensive care unit, when, when the patients are in a very critical condition um, at the limit of the life and the dead, and, and we must, must treat them very effectively and we must support the, the, the clearance, the airway clearance, the, the mucus clearance. And of course, we can position the patients, we can use the position, positional therapy. And as we change the position, we can find another place to put on the frequencer. So in, in many cases, our patients in the intensive care unit, they are in a supine position, back, lying on, a, on their back, and we can treat them on the from front if the tubes and the, and, the, and, and, and the devices let me to do them. And then we can turn the patient on the side, or sometimes we turn the patient on, on, a, on stomach in a prone position, and we can treat in the different uh, body position uh, on the side and on, also on the back. And later on in the rehabilitation phase with the COVID patient, we can use just in the same way as we did or other ways uh, 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 as we did in, in a CF with our CF patients, as I've mentioned in this, in this lecture. Thank you. Great. So maybe we'll turn to a few questions specifically on, on your study, Peter. There was a really great question and it, is, it says, could it be the female patients are looking for technology that might be more comfortable? Um, and that's related to why you um, were able to recruit more female patients. And, and the question ends by saying the vest could be more uncomfortable for females. Yeah. Yeah. And, and females were complained with the, with the vest uh, because of the breast sometimes. And sometimes um, uh, there was a small or not so serious bite, uh, but uh, some uh, skin irritation. Um, I, I don't know whether it was an allergic reaction or something like this, um, a red color full of the, of, the, of the skin. And it occurs with the frequency sometimes and more frequency uh, the, the best. So, so yes, uh, our more dominantly female patients had some problems with the West because it's much more aggressive. Uh, I don't remember whether the boys uh, had a, this, this kind of problem. And, and following from that, in your study, were there any cases where the patients did not tolerate the therapy? No, no, no. So, um, all the patients uh, uh, did all the therapy. The only thing we observed that sometimes we need to start with the lower intensity, with the rest and with the frequencer. The difference was only that uh, uh, the range between the five and the eight intensity of the vest and the range between the 20 to the 200 percent with the frequencer. So we had more patients who didn't tolerate the higher frequency with the rest, and we had less patients who didn't tolerate the higher frequency with the frequencer. So again, I, I, I must jump back to the, the same. Um, the vest is much more strong effect, uh, aggressive uh, effect and treatment. Um, and, 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 and not the frequency that is so much more soft. Yeah. Great. And okay, so another question related to your study. The question is, can you expand on the findings related to oxygen saturation? How soon after the treatment was it measured? And was it repeated one or two hours later? Uh, no, yeah. So uh, during, the tr during the treatment and during the study, I didn't realize that, that there, were a significant, there were a significant difference between the, the frequencer and the vest. So it surprised me very much when, when we've got these results from the statistic calculation. Uh, and um, yeah, we, we didn't measure later, one hour or more later, the, the saturation and nor the nor the lung function. And I think this question related to the 
late phase bronchospasm, I'm not sure, but, but I suppose the late phase bronchospasm that is typical in, in asthmatic patients in case of hyper-responsiveness or hyper-reactive airways, sometimes we have a, a late reaction, a late bronchospasm. But yes, my answer is no, we didn't measure the saturation later, only that three times beginning before uh, mid-time and just at the end of the treatment. And what was it measured before, um, right after the lung function, like along with the lung function tests then, right after the treatment, right? No, was it the... was just right after the treatment. No, no, just at the end of the treatment. Mm -hmm. So before we finished. So because this, uh, this uh, pulse oximeter, what, that uh, the sensor okay. is, uh, is connected to the fingertip, um, that's why at the seventh minute, we put on it and we measure it till the eight, uh, sorry, at, at the eighth minute, we put on it and it lasts for one minute, we measure the saturation on the fingertip. So just that's why we had a, a real reliable uh, oxygen saturation just at the ninth minute. And one minute earlier, the the end of the treatment. So at the 17th minute, we put on the, 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 the uh, pulse oximeter on the fingertip and we measure it for again, one minute. But the measure was just at the, before or earlier the finishing of the treatment. S sorry for my English. Okay, okay, no, that's clear, thank you. <laughs> okay, if you understand me. Yeah, <laughs> I think we, I, I think, um, we also had discussed um, switching to the sputum results. Um, maybe you could say a few words on the sputum results and um, whether there were differences if you have patients that were more severe or less severe um, when, when you sort of separate the, the, yeah. the patient type. Yeah. Uh, and connecting to this question, it comes to my mind that I think it would be very interesting to check or to control the rheology of the sputum that evacuated with the frequency or with the west. I don't know anything about this, but uh, I think it will be the, uh, a future study to differentiate between, uh, between the, uh, the device, um, because I think, I suppose that, uh, that uh, it's very important that where the mucus comes from, from the deeper part of the lung or the more central part of the lung. And um, jump back to your original question. So I, I think if we divide our group into two subgroup, the patients who evacuate more sputum and less sputum, uh, it may be interesting to compare the, if there is difference between the result of the expectoration, how effective was the frequency or how effective was the best in, in the subgroup of the patients who cleared more mucus or in the, in the subgroup of the patients who cleared less mucus. Yeah. Super. Um, we'll, we'll have one more question and then we'll give you, we'll, we'll, we'll let you have a break. Um, I think we'll, we'll close with a, a question, a general question again, and, and it sort of leads to the very first question that I asked you, and, and you've said that the device is very soft. So the question is, what about use on young infants and possibly neonates? Uh, repeat your question, I didn't understand you. Um, do you feel that the frequencer could be used successfully on young infants and, and neonates? Ah, uh -huh. uh, yeah, and you have different size of the of the head, yeah, and I I I think they can tolerate it more than 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 any other noisy and aggressive <laughs> and aggressive uh, treatment. So yes, I recommend it for yeah, very in this very young age, uh, just after birth, uh, in a, maybe in a premature also. Mm -hmm. Well, we have uh, additional questions, which is great, but we promise that we'll follow up to those that we didn't get to by email. Um, and, and Joanne has taken note of them and we appreciate all of the questions. Thank you so much, Peter, for your very uh, great presentation and the valuable feedback.
um, will uh, will uh, let you have a, gl a glass of water and a little bit of break now. <laughs> um, uh, we really appreciate your time today. Before I turn it back over to Joanne to close, I'd like to just invite you to attend our next webinar, which will be held in August. And this webinar will cover results uh, of a non-comparative multi-center clinical economic trial of the frequencer for the treatment of COVID-19. So similar to Peter's um, um, study, there were questions on um, patient satisfaction as well as ther therapist satisfaction, as well as measurements of the device's effectiveness and the overall impact on patient care and the economic benefits with the device. So please join us in August to learn more. And I'll turn it back to Joanne just to close the webinar today. Um, thank you, Laura and Peter, for truly an engaging Q&A and great presentation. I'd also like to thank all of the panelists for joining today's webinar and for all of your questions. Thank you, Dr. Borker, truly for uh, joining us today and sharing your study results. If you have any additional questions following today's webinar, please don't hit hesitate to send them along. And also we can put you in touch with your local representative for further assistance as well. Today's webinar was recorded and it will be available on our YouTube channel as all of our webinars will be available on our YouTube channel. So please don't hesitate to uh, visit us frequently. Thank you very much for joining us today and enjoy the rest of your day.